So for indoor cannabis production, ventilation is very important. And here on Tobacco University, we're gonna break down and go over some of the details of ventilation. Let's get into ventilation's importance in an indoor cannabis grow facility. Well, first off, we need to consider both the intake and the exhaust. So outline how air will enter and also exit the growing environment. It's important to think of the entire path of air so that the two systems are not competing with one another, but instead working together. You don't want one that's bringing air outlet at a greater rate, one that's exhausting the different. You want to make sure that these are working in unison uh, so you're not having competing systems to allow for efficiency of your airflow. Now, Grow Worms intake filters, the goal is to bring outside air in. So when we're having that intake area, we're having that outside area, we're bringing it in. This can be passive, uh, but a pre-filter is advised to ensure the prevent of potential contaminants from entering the grow space. It's kind of like the first line of defense there. And again, the amount of intake, the type of intake filter can vary, but just having something doesn't allow this air to passively come in, even though that is technically an option. These intake filter options, to be specific, HEPA filters, carbon filters, or just simply a physical screen. This works for large items such as bugs or dust, but the HEPA and carbon filter are more kind of to purify the air, not only to remove the larger particulates, but also some of those more finer ones as well. Those HEPA filters, it's just an example of uh, one here called the dust shroom. The HEPA filters can help remove dust, smoke, mold, bacteria, pollen, other har harmful volatile um, kind of components from the intake air. The HEPA filters are made from tightly woven synthetic fibers that are also washable to increase the total usage life, and that's a great um, advantage to these. HEPA filters can block out most airborne particles down to 0.3 microns in size. It's a very small particle. Now the intake, if you're looking at intake carbon filters, uh, carbon or charcoal filters can reduce odors while still maintaining a high uh, flow through rate. This makes them commonly seen with exhaust fans in sealed rooms. While you could use these for intake because they're really meant to kind of remove odors, not really the best for the intake, more suited for the exhaust filters uh, part of your system. Then we get to simple, just a physical screen, you know, a physical barrier there. Uh, these are the simplest, the least expensive options. And if you are going with the passive system, you should at least have a physical screen. They're made from a uh, mesh, a bug screen, that's based on the size of the mesh will catch insects of various sizes. So keep that in mind. What insects are you trying to exclude? In addition, for fine mesh uh, size screens, it's also possible to filter out molds and mildews, but that's a very, very fine mesh. Uh, the goal is to keep uh, air cooled reflectors and fans clean from particulate to kind of prevent the need to go through and clean them nearly as often. It's easier sometimes to just change out a filter or clean the filter. These are typically made from washable materials with adjustable openings to ensure an easy fit for a variety of applications. Then we have the exhaust filters in our uh, grow space. So these ideally clean air is assumed to be in the grow space. So when it comes to the exhaust filters, the only item that typically needs to be removed is odors. Uh, this is why HEPA and physical screen filters are only used at the intake of a grow space, not in the exhaust. So it's being mindful of where you're gonna place what filter. For exhaust filters, the carbon or charcoal filters are usually the standard choice, as we see here, pulling air through, and they're going to be exhausted out of the grow tent. Now, there's some exhaust filter options. So pretty much your carbon exhaust filters or inline carbon filters would be advised uh, to be used in this particular situation. Now, the carbon exhaust filters, we see one example right here. Activated carbon filters are often an efficient way to capture most of those volatile uh, carbons, um, compounds within that the fine carbon uh, particulate. But those fine carbon, can, due to their high surface area, can also filter out gases and odors from the air. They should be used with a fan as part of the ventilation system for maximum effectiveness, meaning you do not want to just simply have them passively uh, exhausting air out. The carbon itself absorbs the air contaminants due to the fine pore structure that allows for efficient capture of materials while still maintaining good airflow that is important to the area, the growing area, for the cooling purposes. So again, you're kind of getting the best of both right there. 
Now our inline carbon filters operate with basically the same material, but inline carbon filters make it easy for installation in typical duct and cooling systems. They offer the same benefits of the common end or start ventilation systems as we saw in our last uh, picture two slides ago. They're commonly used in grow tents, air-cooled lighting, areas where air is being transported through ducting from one area to another. However, just keep in mind their efficiency tends to be a little bit less, so you may have to have a little bit larger fan or a little bit higher um, movement of air to make these work effectively. And you also do not want to forget in general about the ducting itself. So there's also ducting and there's also pre-filters of very important components to a ventilation system. For the air ducting options, we have uh, non-insulated, which is the most commonly used, as we see down here. And then there's also insulated ducting options. These are typically used when trying to reduce temperature changes from air transport. For example, if intake air has been cooled before entering the grow space, we want to keep it cool. Both serve the same purpose of transporting air from one area to another in a controlled pathway. So one's not better than the other, but if you're looking at having that difference in temperature, you might want to go with that insulated um, ducting option. And then there's also, lastly here, pre-filters. So pre-filters are a great, cheap, and easy way to extend the life of other more expensive and harder to find replacement filters. They're most commonly used with uh, carbon filters, so the point that they usually come with uh, the carbon filter you might be purchasing. Pre-filters ask act as a physical barrier to particles before they have a chance to reach the main filter with the goal to extend the life of the main filter. Also, what's great about them is they're easily removed, can be washed, and then reinstalled. Always a good idea to have an extra one on hand, but a lot of times it's not needed because you can just go through and wash these. And again, their goal is to catch those big particulates to extend the life of that finer mesh, in this case, of your carbon filter. So hopefully this helps you understand your ventilation system and ensure that you're operating it at the maximum efficiency.